All right, so here we are. This little mini assignment for the week of May 4th. Um, we're gonna learn six ways to create the illusion of space. And the illusion is just the like, not it's not really there, right? Because on paper, we're just drawing it to make it look like it. But it's not actually like real life. That's what illusion means, okay? So the element of art space, it really has to do with a couple main things. So the background, foreground, and middle ground. If you're looking at a picture, so here's my beautiful landscape. There's the background with the mountains, the foreground with the tree closer to the front, closer to you, the viewer. And then the middle ground is just that little house kind of in between where the tree is and the mountains are. Space also has to do with positive and negative space. I mentioned that in my video with my coffee cup, right? So all around here is negative space, but the actual object is positive space. So same with this little chicken colored in is the positive space and all around it is the negative space. Um, overlapping is one way to create an illusion of space we're gonna talk about in just a minute, but you can see how there's just one circle and then behind it, I just put these other little circles. If you remember doing Zen tangles, we kind of do that a lot to create this illusion of space within our Zen tangle drawings. And then one point perspective, this is something that we'll be practicing a little bit later, but just to give you a quick rundown, a perspective has a vanishing point, which is this little dot and a horizon line. Okay, horizon lines are gonna be pretty important for us in this mini activity. And all that is is just the a line going left to right to look like it's off in the distance, right? If you imagine the sunset on an ocean, there's that line where the sky meets the water. And then here's just a little box I drew using one point perspective where the lines always go back to the vanishing point. And I just added some beautiful shading right there to create an illusion of a 3D box. All right, so for this activity, you're going to need a piece of paper and a pencil. That's it. Feel free to get, if you like markers, you can get pens, you can get color pencils, whatever you like. I know some people really like straight lines. You can also get a ruler, but you do not need one. Also, I have an option. If you want and you have a printer at home, you can go ahead and print this worksheet out. It's attached to the assignment or you can go ahead and open it on your computer right now so you can follow along as well. This is basically what we're going to be creating on this side, okay? So there's six different ways to create illusion of space. There's overlap, shading, placement, size, value and focus, and then linear perspective. So go ahead and pause this video if you need to go get a pencil and some paper, or you can ask your parents if you can print out this worksheet, that's fine too. But if you can't, don't worry, you're just gonna draw some little boxes, okay? So go ahead and pause it right now if you need to. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and show if, if I didn't have a printer, what I would do. So I sketched out these six boxes. I'm gonna go ahead and just use a Sharpie so it's easier for you all to see at home. All right. So go ahead and draw six boxes. And remember, you can always pause the video if you need more time to do these tasks. That's what's great about videos, because in class, you can't really pause me in real life, right? But luckily, with technology, you can kind of learn at your own pace and do what's needed. All right, I have my six rectangles now. Okay, so again, this is just on this side of the paper. If you printed it out, you're just gonna fill in those boxes. But if you needed to make your own, I like making my own, it's fun. We're gonna label them. So call this one overlap. This one is shading. This one is placement. And this one is size. And then we have value and focus and then I'm just gonna call this perspective and because I like titling things also 
you can do this as well. Six ways to create the illusion of space. Because remember, we're not actually making space right now, right? We're just drawing. Okay, so overlap. Overlap is one object appears to be behind the other. So the way you want to do this one, you're going to start with just drawing a circle wherever you want on your paper. You could also do other shapes if you're into that. You do not have to do circles. Um, after you draw that one circle, go ahead and draw at least two more behind it so they can be next to it. I'm going to go ahead and I like putting one here, maybe one there. And then I'm going to draw the horizon line behind it to give it the illusion that they're like on, say, a counter and maybe they're my oranges or something, all right? So that's overlap. You could also draw it like this in the example that I have on our assignment. Okay, so that's overlap. Um, shading, here we go. Shading, we talked about this a lot in class. Um, those of you who joined later, you might have missed it and that's okay. So light and shadow create the illusion of form and space. So form, remember we made our clay projects. Um, we also had a sphere worksheet where we shaded a sphere. That's basically what you're gonna do right now. So draw a nice circle right in the middle. Give yourself a horizon line in the background so it looks like it's sitting on a table. I'm gonna switch to my pencil because I like shading. Okay, so remember you can put the butt of the pencil in the palm of your hand like this and then kind of hold it like so. So your pointer finger's out and your thumb's holding it like that. If you're left-handed, it would be the opposite way. Um, I'm gonna just start by going back and forth, kind of at a medium value, right at the edge. So my light source is coming from this way, right? I'll just draw a little sun so you can see. And then I might adjust my hand when I do my lighter values, just so I'm not pressing too hard. And you can kind of do your lines, follow the sphere like so. Then you're gonna to wanna to come in as if you're writing to get these darker values. So you can adjust your hand grip as needed. So see if you can put at least three or four values on the sphere. I know it's taking you back a few months, but I know you can do it, okay? And then you're gonna just draw a little, something called a drop shadow, which is just like the shadow the sphere will leave as if it were sitting on a table. So just color that in nice and dark. Okay, so there you go. This creates the illusion of a form that this thing is taking up some sort of space. So that's shading. Okay. Again, you can pause the video if you need to to catch up, no worries. So placement is this next one. Objects higher in a picture appear to be in the distance. So it's just the placement of your spheres, or if you wanna do other objects, that's fine, relative to where the horizon line is. So to do this one, let's just start with drawing some circles. I don't know, maybe three or four, five or so. This one in the back, I'm gonna have the horizon line kind of go right there. All right, so this kind of looks like it's towards the back and these ones are towards the front. Option here, you can go ahead and shade it in for extra practice. I highly recommend doing that. For the sake of making this video shorter, I'm not gonna do that right now. But you can see in my little example, I shaded these little guys too. Okay, so placement. Now we're gonna do size. So size just is um, talking about if objects are the same size, the distant ones look smaller than the closer ones. So you could even set an experiment up in real life if you have like a basketball and other um, maybe a couple basketballs and you place them in different spots the basketball closest to you is going to look bigger than the one further away so go ahead and you can even make your circles off the page like I did here so the one that's closest to us so say this is right at the like right in front of your face the camera um, this one's a little bigger or a little smaller and then they just get kind of smaller as you go back and maybe you have a little guy way back there all right so size 
Um, you can go ahead and shade these as well to give it an illusion of a sphere just to continue practicing. Okay, but again, for the sake of time, I won't do that right now, but you can shade in these little spheres. Okay, this next one, value and focus. So value, if you remember, has to do with the light to dark, all right? And it creates an illusion of a sphere. That's what we did with shading. Um, but it also has to do with detail. So detail is like, has to do with focus. So the more detail you have, the closer it appears, right? So my hand is getting closer to the camera. You can see the details of my hand. The further away it is, the less details you see. So that's all I'm talking about. Um, so the lighter the value it, of an object is and the less detail it has, so the more out of focus, the more it appears to be in the back, as you can see these ones back here, all right? So my example, I just started with a sphere. And this one, I'll do with a pencil just to kind of show an example. I'll try to press really dark. So here's my sphere that's super up close. It's gonna be beautiful with lots of detail. All right, fill that in however you like. And then there's a little shadow here. Doo -doo -doo. And then say my, oops, um, you can have a horizon if you want, but not necessary. You're gonna basically do what we did with overlapping up here um, and put some little spheres very lightly, just kind of sketch them in one behind another. You could even do one that's not touching. And the lighter they are, the more they kind of look like they're far away. Right, so you can kind of add a little bit of value just to give them that effect that they're round, something like that, okay? But this one up front is the closest and the more focused or the more detailed. So that's all that value and focus is talking about. This also applies with color. If you remember in the video we watched, um, some colors make it appear closer so typically in paintings, blues and purples are in the distance to give it more of an illusion of the far away. And up close, there's typically like warmer colors, like reds and yellows and oranges to make it look like it's up close. All right, last but not least, perspective. And we're gonna go further into this later in the week, but just to give you a quick overview again, linear perspective they have here says, Parallel lines and edges seem to go toward one or more vanishing points. So this week we're just going to learn about one point perspective. So start by drawing a dot anywhere on your paper, maybe in the middle, maybe up high. That's your vanishing point. Then go ahead and draw in your horizon like that. Okay, and then let's start by just drawing lines from the corner of your box to the vanishing point. And then maybe one a little bit more centered, go towards the vanishing point. And these lines that I just drew do not have to be very dark, they can be light. Okay, and then you're just gonna draw in your sphere to kind of fill that space. And then maybe another one gets smaller, and then another one gets smaller. So you can see how they match in those lines. And then, of course, you can always add your shading to give it that illusion. So if you imagine walking down a street, you're looking ahead, it, gets, it looks like it's going more and more narrow towards that vanishing point. All right, so these are our six ways to create the illusion of space. Go ahead and, if you haven't been following along, pause the video now. I'd like you to create your own version of this or again, fill in this worksheet and go after that, take a picture of it and you're gonna upload it to the assignment that you found this attachment in the video. All right, great job, take care.